Okay, welcome back, uh, Dr. Peter Fail. And uh, we were talking about uh, the procedure. We just kind of, you had a, an animation of it or an illustration. Uh, and during the break, I was just kind of asking you the length of the procedure, how long it takes, and that kind of varies from patient to patient. It does. It's, uh, you know, it, it also has a very steep learning curve. So it, uh, our first couple of procedures took us several hours to do. Uh, we have learned a lot as we've proceeded with this case, and, and one of the nice things of how this type of procedure is done, we have a, a clinical specialist uh, who literally sits down on every case, not only cases we do, but the other 37 cases around the country. Uh, and so they're able to pick up different tips and tricks of things that worked, things that didn't work, right. uh, that made the procedure uh, much, much easier. Uh, we also, as I said earlier, we take all of this data and we look at it uh, through, through literally four, five, six hours of echocardiography, and we try to determine uh, certain nuances of the procedure that allow us to make it a, a safer procedure and a more uh, efficacious procedure. We're able to take that data and utilize that, and, and every, patient, every subsequential patient is able to benefit from that data. Right. Um, during the break, we were also to, uh, talking, and you were telling me how lucky that CIS is or HOMA is to have these trials, and I, right. I, I know that's probably your modesty coming out. A, a lot has to do with, of course, CIS, your skills, the other um, cardiologist skills over there. I know that has a big part to do with it, but why this area, uh, why CIS? Tell us a little bit, uh, why, why is this just a good fit for the whole area? Well, you know, we, we at CIS have been interested in, in, in interventional or research in general in cardiovascular disease. And, and so uh, one of the things that I have done as, as the head of research is really try to go out and, and search out trials uh, that we think would be a good fit. In, in this area, we have a very high prevalence of vascular disease, specifically coronary artery disease and therefore the functional uh, mitral regurgitation, the person who's had a heart attack, who's had bypass surgery, seems to be relatively prevalent. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of patients that we had submitted to the trial were a functional mitral regurgitation. Those people who've had previous uh, heart attacks, whose hearts are basically the cause of the leakage of the valve and not the primary valve issue itself. Uh, so that's where it fit very nicely for us. Sure. And uh, we've been excited about being participating in that trial and being able to uh, uh, put in some very good numbers, I think, and, and some very, very good data for this trial. How do you see uh, cardiology, I guess, developing in the future? I know this is part of it, obviously, Absolutely. but uh, Absolutely. T t tell us a little bit well, about You know, there's, I, think, I think there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people out there with some extremely good ideas. Uh, a colleague of mine out of University of Pennsylvania is actually developing a completely replaceable valve. Uh, as opposed to doing this where you actually fix it, you'll be able to put in a brand new valve. There are uh, trials going on right now that are looking at uh, replacing the aortic valve. There are trials that are looking at replacing the uh, tricuspid or fixing the tricuspid valve. They already have trials that are doing the pulmonary valve. So there's a, there's a whole branch of cardiology that's venturing off into what's called structural heart disease. We have cardiologists today that do a lot of intervention on, on heart uh, arteries or leg arteries or aneurysms or carotids or whatever the case may be. And there's another branch that's really being developed over the past probably five to seven years that are looking at uh, valvular disease, uh, uh, PFOs or holes in the heart and stuff like that and how to fix those things that up until uh, 10 years ago were really in the realm of surgery. I think surgery is still going to be a very, very important aspect in, in vascular disease. I don't think the, the surgeons are losing sleep that they're going to be out of. You know, I think they're, they're going to be a very, very integral part. I think what they do, however, is going to be different. I don't think they're the, the um, straight up bypass surgery, I think, is, is even today is, is a, uh, a thing of the past. Now, the people that they're taking to bypass surgery have some very serious disease. Uh, I think you're going to see some valve surgery the same way. There are going to be a certain group of patients where this technique is just not going to work and surgery is going to be a much better option. And there's going to be a, a group of patients where we're going to learn that this surgery or this type of procedure uh, may help them uh, maybe for the short period. Maybe it, it, it buys them a 10-year uh, hiatus from needing surgery. Uh, we don't know. That's some of the data that we're going to collect over the next 7 to 10 years. And now uh, with this uh I, I guess with this trial, uh, is there an end date, or is that just continue? We can, we can you know, uh, there, there, the, the trial itself has a five-year end date, but that still means that from that, that is the official sort of 
the last patient in five years later, that the trial is completely ended. Now, the other thing that, uh, that happens is if the FDA approves it, then that trial is stopped right there. However, for all the patients that we do, we continuously follow them. We're interested in looking at what's happening. To get the data. Absolutely. We want to make sure we understand what's going on. We don't want uh, to be sort of uh, cavalier about it and say, well, you know, the trial's finished. We don't have to worry. Right. We, have, we have to continue to follow these patients, and we will continue to follow these right. patients. Uh, it just seems like an amazing uh, very uh, aggressive, advancing type field. Right. I mean, it's, it's ever changing. It is, it, you know, and one of the things, it, probably the, the, the biggest change in medicine is in cardiovascular disease. And, and I think the, uh, being the, the, the 800 pound gorilla of disease processes where the vast majority of people uh, in the United States succumb to some sort of vascular event, uh, I think that that's an ever evolving pro uh, problem or ever probably uh, procedure. And the field itself is literally exploding there are a, a lot of people out there that have very, very uh, good ideas on how to fix things, um, from valves to new ways to do uh, stents to new ways to do uh, leg arteries, whatever the case may be, there's an enormous amount of, uh, of research that's being done every day. And of course, that's uh, more on the treatment end that we've been talking about, but what about the old-fashioned preventative well, measures? Know, are, are they still the same, or well, are they know, making advancements well, there? Well, they're also making advancements there. There are newer new medicines coming out, newer, newer, uh, ideas on trying to catch the person before they need the mitral valve surgery, before they need the bypass surgery, before they need the leg surgery, whatever the case may be, uh, in order to uh, look at that younger group of patients and try to uh, get a, uh, a group of, of blood tests, if you will, uh, see if they're at risk and trying to deal with them uh, earlier as opposed to wait until something bad happens and be very, very reactionary and say, well, you know, you've had your heart attack, you've had this problem, now we have to put you on medicine. I think there's a, a big uh, push to try to catch those patients earlier and try to prevent bad things from happening. Very good, doctor. Thank you very much. We appreciate you uh, coming on the show. Thank you. All right, what we'll do is uh, Stan Gravois will be up next in sports, so don't go away. I know he's gonna have a lot concerning sports, college baseball, the uh, upcoming uh, playoffs of college baseball, the tournament, and maybe he'll make some comments on that. Don't go away, Stan Gravois up next. <laughs>